Thank you. I now recognize Representative Rivas for five minutes of questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for holding this hearing. I appreciate hearing from the witnesses who represent uh, important agencies and research initiatives within our federal government. Uh, since the passing of the Chips and Science Act, our institutions have been making great efforts to implement many research security mandates. The Chips and Science Act requires institutions who receive funding under the law to implement certain compliance with research security policies and stipulates that institutions must maintain internal controls for things like data security. I worry about the capacity of smaller institutions um, to keep up and that concern has only grown since NIH, DOD, NSF, and DOE issued new policies capping indirect costs at 15%. Indirect costs are expenditures that aren't tied directly to research staffing or supplies, but they nonetheless support infrastructure and activities that are vital to the functioning of research institutions, such as with research security. While implementation of these policies is stalled in the courts, our universities are significantly adjusting their operations. The reality is that this drastic reduction in indirect costs, uh, reimbursements, will result in more than 800 million in cuts for the state of California, my home state, just from NIH grants alone. The life science community in California supports over 1.1 million Californians, generating around 400 billion in economic output. And every American has benefited from NIH funding. 3.7 million Californians receive care at teaching hospitals. The capping of indirect costs will devastate the development of groundbreaking research, inhibit patient access to life-saving treatments and clinical trials, and will cede American dominance in biomedical research to our foreign competitors like China, Russia, and Iran for years to come. Dr. Kaiser, Dr. Valdez, and Mr. Tilden, do indirect costs contribute to universities' compliance with laws, including those related to research security, and how will capping indirect cost at 15% impact universities' ability to comply with the law, and how will those impacts be felt at smaller institutions in particular? I can start. Uh, we're, we're committed to providing resources to institutions of all size uh, to focus on research security and research security efforts. In fact, uh, we have an award to Los Angeles Valley College in your district. Oh. Mm -hmm to bolster cybersecurity efforts at the college, and um, that's, that's a direct award. We also, of course, focus on the uh, secure awards to provide the resources that are needed, um, and the Secure Center uh, has a, uh, a co-award at Stanford University. So these are the ways that we want to make sure that we provide the overall efforts here. Now let me say that for, for us, the biggest thing that we need to do for our institutions is provide consistency right? and provide harmonization. And so uh, the requirement to establish research security programs at universities, we are coordinating through, uh, through the interagency to do a memorandum of understanding. So we have one set of requirements on institutions to lower administrative burden and lower costs. Dr. Valdez. Yes, and I'll agree with Dr. Kaiser. Um, we do understand that this, this may be a concern, and no, we, we absolutely want to make sure that all of these requirements are harmonized and all the guidance is harmonized. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention was also the Secure Center, which um, hopefully when, when, when it's all set up and running, it'll be able to provide some guidance toward, towards these smaller institutions that may not have all the resources that they need. Thank you. So this huge notebook here, and I don't have a perfect answer for you on this one because this is something that's a little outside of my area, but I will echo Dr. Valdez. One of the ways that we can help, this, especially the smaller institutes, the smaller academic centers, is through like the, the, the NSF Secure Center and providing the standardized approach. So that way they can just adopt it, right? They can just, uh, I, I want to flag this, uh, I think, a fantastic publication. Uh, sadly, DOE was not involved with this, but we have seen it, know it, and it's a great little primer to really help the academic institutes understand this is the kind of stuff that we need that makes you all much more in alignment with our requirements. 
So, uh, you know, again, barring, uh, barring an additional law or something, um, that's the way we're attempting to, uh, to help these smaller institutions to get through this, recognizing there are these caps on the indirects. Yeah, I, I, I'm still concerned on how these caps will hurt, um, you know, our institutions and uh, inhibit our ability to continue our global leadership and R&D. But I yield back since my time is up.